Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to do a different kind of video than usual. I've been seeing a lot of people asking around YouTube and in-game how to play Summoner's War on your PC. Now we did actually cover this before in a video, uh, but we didn't go into it in depth, so today I'm going to do that for you guys. Hopefully it will help some of you out, you know, if you just want to play on your PC, or if you want to get into recording for YouTube and stuff. This will only cover the recording, uh, recover the playing portion of Summoner's War. The recording side of it is done by another app, which will be Fraps or Shadow Play or, an, or another app like that. So, okay, so the first thing you want to do, guys, is go to your phone, go to your App Store. Now, I can't actually show you this because we're going to have to connect the phone in a minute and, and walk you through it. So go to your App Store, locate the app Mobazin, it's a free app. You download that, and you set a username up with your email address here, set up a password for it, then what you want to do guys is go to mobazin.com, this is their main website, so there's two versions of the app, there's the web version, so you can run it through the website, or you can download Mobazin to your PC. So this is the Android part of mirroring and streaming from your phone to your PC, I'll cover the iOS version in a little while. Okay guys, so download Mobazin to your PC, then what you want to do is enter the same email and password in. Now remember, it's case sensitive, so if you've entered it in with a capital S, you'll have to enter that in every time. If you've entered it in with an uncapped S, every time you'll have to enter that in. It will be exactly the same every single time, just don't forget that, okay? Because it, it won't change, there's no way to change it. If your email is not in caps, then yeah, you get the picture. Okay, so anyway, download that to your PC. We've already got it downloaded. You double tap that, then you want to go to the email address portion, enter your email address, enter your password in. Okay, so there's there's quite a few things to go into here. Mobazin is quite picky with certain devices. Okay, so uh, what will usually happen is you'll plug your USB in to your computer and then when you connect through Mobazin, it will ask you on your phone to accept USB debugging. So once that's done, then you'll go to the computer app and it will give you a code. It will give you a two-step verification code. So this is the R Support Help Desk. This is Mobazin's actual website. You guys can go here if you are confused by what I'm saying. But hopefully this should be clear enough for you guys. So uh, there's an also a section that says where is USB debugging located because on certain devices it's quite tricky to get to. And with this apparently you don't need a code map just pointed out but uh, I would say I think it's the first time you connect you do actually need the code and then from every time afterwards it should just remember those details. I'm not sure if that's right or not. Okay, so as you can see here, allow USB debugging. Uh, what it should do then is activate something called booster mode. Um, when you plug it into your phone, it's going to ask you, do you want to activate booster mode? And we're using two devices, we're using a HTC and a Samsung, so for these devices it's, it's fair, fairly easy. Okay, so once that's connected... Oh, what are you doing there, MF? Sorry? What is booster mode? Yeah, I, I do have a window up as well for that. Yeah, so as you can see, you can get to it in the app on your phone as well. Now, once that's all connected, you should be able to use the mouse to control your PC. With my phone, as it's a HTC, it's really tricky. What I have to do is I have to keep restarting my, my phone to clear the cache. And um, that is because HTC wasn't originally compatible before the, the Jelly Bean update. So that's what I have to do if I want to do this. Otherwise it will be just straight mirroring to your PC, but I'm sure most of you guys don't want to do that, you want to actually play too. To keep the game over your screen, you want to go to settings here, then click general, you want to go down to always on top, and then you want to click use. We skip back out of that. Now to go into full screen mode because it's going to be in this phone mode, you'll hit Alt Enter. As this is the desktop for the phone, it won't allow you to do that. It will just 
uh, is it control enter? Control enter, sorry, control enter. It won't give you the landscape view until you've gone into the game. From here you can activate the volume settings, you can draw on the screen and do all sorts of other stuff, fun stuff there. Uh, then you click the pencil again to get rid of that. From here you can also record and take pictures, so that's really handy. It's nice to have it in the app. Also when you're in full screen mode you can click that to come out of it again. Again guys, control enter will get you into full screen mode. This down here is your menu buttons for your phone. Mine's slightly different as it's HTC, so you'll notice in some of our videos it's going to have different menu buttons. That's because we're using two different devices. So let's go to Summoners War quickly and, and do a demo of that. With the app being always on top, that's really handy. You can, you can minimise it and then while you're doing something on the PC or looking at the websites, you could be farming secret dungeons and, and just happily farming away and just you know, clicking on there now and again. So I found that really helpful to put that on top. So there you go, that's that's basically it guys. It's not super complicated. It was quite confusing for me obviously because there's two parts to it. You have to have it on your phone and then on your PC and then use the PC's two-step verification code to verify it and then it mirrors it across. And once again, restart your phone if the if the um, screen control feature isn't working, then that should be good to go. So with iOS devices, now this is a bit different, this is tricky because there's no way to actually screen control on an iOS device without jailbreaking your iPhone or iPad or whatever device you use. And basically if you're on a Mac you should be able to use this device, I'm talking about the iPad or iOS device, through AirPlay which is something that is designed to mirror it to big screens for presentations and stuff. The way around this is, if you're on a PC and you want to play on your PC uh, with your iOS device, you want to download the Reflector app. Okay, so Reflector, there's apparently a Reflector 2 app, it's almost exactly the same. So this is a paid app guys, it basically just converts it to your PC. The only way around getting this for free is, you can try the, eight day, uh, the 7 day trial. Or you can do something illegal and get it for free that way. I won't tell you how to do that. So once you've got Reflector, download it to your PC and then it should come up in your cache over the side here. I've only done this once but it, it worked straight away. It wasn't as hard as getting more business to run. But once you've done that, you uh, obviously install it, make a username and stuff. And then you go to iOS device and this is for iOS 8 only, you swipe the bottom and then you hit AirPlay. It should be one of the settings, so you, you basically swipe from the bottom here on your iOS device and then there should be a setting that says AirPlay. Hit that, then you want to tap on the PC's name that you're syncing to. It has to be connected by the charger, then toggle the mirror screen and then it should mirror the phone to your PC. So that is basically it for a reflector. I'll attach a guide in the description of this video, but there is no way to screen control like this. Once again, I'll say this, you have to jailbreak your device to get screen control on an iOS device. So I think that about covers it. Um, just quickly looking over for any little things I've missed. And remember guys, so you can go to the R Support Help Desk, Sometimes the USB debugging mode doesn't appear, so once you've plugged in your USB it usually tells you on your phone and then you've got a, a certain amount of time, I think it's 1 minute 30 seconds to enter in your uh, two-step verification code. So this is the help desk site, it's helpdesk.rssupport.com forward slash categories forward slash 2007874 dash mobizen. Otherwise just Google search R support help desk mobizen. And I think that's about it guys, I really hope this helps you out. If there was a proper guide for someone as well at the start, I know you can search this and, and find it, that would have helped me a bit better, but I've done it myself and, and that's about it. Like, comment, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video guys. Peace out.